let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, after a surprising upset to last match, we have blue team here on the left. 2-3 facing off against their opponents. The red team Mateo and Barbaretto are at their match points just needing to close out this match for their victory. Playing on the map Balls. I'm curious to see how this is uh, how this is going to turn out. Oh. Yeah, Felix and Lanson in the last seconds crawling back into uh, the series. I am pretty much super excited. If they can win this, it's going to be a full seven game final. And that's what we want, honestly. So I'm, I'm a little bit biased towards Lanson and Felix. I, I love Meta and Bobretto. I just want all the games from this, this hype level. <laughs> I just want all of them. Give me. Yes. Yes, please. It's it's so good. If blue team wins this, then they will tie up this series. And we'll go into the final match in the best of seven. And red team is looking to make sure that doesn't happen. Because things have been a lot closer than they than they needed to be. And red team has been a caught off guard multiple times now. Indeed. So it looks like the teams are actually going for similar strategies. We have one team, on the blue team is going for a swarm missile with flak support, or at least a armory support. Uh, we've seen people use rockets rather than flak to quite successful uh, effect. And on the right hand side, red team is going for just, wait, did they change? I think, I think Bob changed strategies at some point. He has his armory in a strange position, and he stopped claiming the big island for a bit. And they're both going for... They're both going for munitions plants. So that's going to be cannons out of red team. Interesting. Uh, we we saw this uh, map played in the FPL earlier. It was Ethan and Geiger playing it, and uh, Ethan was on the top base. He builds down to the first uh, big island and build a huge compound with a bunch of munition plant weapons there and a lot of anti-air. Uh, they are facing up against some nukes and they just destroyed the competition. Well, we may see that strategy being played here. Mind you, uh, regardless of which tactic Red Team goes for, they're going to be on the defensive out the gate as the munitions plant weapons will always arrive after the heavy weapons, or rather, should I say, the uh, the nukes for the blue team. So blue team's gonna have the early game advantage. They're gonna have. They're gonna take the aggressor phase. We'll see if they'll Indeed. be able to deal enough damage with that to set red team too far behind. Uh, yeah, even I think Barbaretto is gonna go with that. Uh, is he building the two and a half high box? He is. So he's gonna be building the munition plant weapons and the larger island, which is gonna take him even longer. So Bob is not going to be a significant participant in this battle for the first for the next couple minutes here. Whereas Mateo is going to be basically one v two against what is going to be nukes, fog launchers, and miniguns, and also snipers. Yeah, the nuke is about to complete for a Lanson. The first hit is going to be crucial. It's really close. Uh, so if he aims it well, he very well might do critical damage. Yes, uh, there is a direct line of sight to the core, and that's... I don't think that's lethal range for the nuke, but that is um, a really, really close call. Up to make the, make the angle better for him. There it goes. Yep, 45% oh. HP remaining. The Straight fog. into the core. The fog prevents Midigun. rebuilds. Miniguns take out another piece of metal. There is not much left of Mateo's core. And this is effectively a 1v2 for the next two minutes. And he's not off to a good start. Yeah, yeah the, the nuke is about to reload. It's going to be an instant reshoot. Do right. they have uh, something to break those those defenses? Maybe the miniguns could break, the, uh, break those defenses? From Felix, uh, the I think they're waiting to get the uh, the buzzsaw up and running, which yeah. would be 
very, very yeah. beneficial for them. As as Romero mentioned in the chat, this is this whole fight is a roller coaster. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. I love every moment. I love every moment of this. Bus are ready. Let's go, Lance. Hands. And the C nuke got destroyed. All right, I think Mateo has actually stabilized here. He has no surviving. He has no surviving weapons, but Bob is coming with the anti-air, and the requisite time has passed. Another cannons are out and active. First cannon has been fired. I am. And now it's just a race of outgunning the other. Exactly, and that's gonna be a tough. That's gonna be a tough one. Uh, Mateo is definitely behind for obvious reasons. Uh, he has not yet even started a heavy weapon, whereas Bob is. He's only got one cannon. One cannon can slowly chip away at things, but one cannon does not end the game. I wonder if that Bassa could cut. Yeah. Yep. I was about to say that. Shredding. Yeah, the bus are cutting the. Uh, yeah, cu cutting the weak foundations for the shield. This is uh, this is looking quite bad for Mateo and Bob here. Mateo eliminated Bob. He's got the base to do it, or should I say, he's got the strongest base out of anyone here, and he still has hardly taken a, taken advantage of all of the expansion, all the expansion available. But that's just yeah. There's so he much firepower on the field already. He has to take the eco from uh, Meto and uh, really make his shots count because if, if he can't put down the, enough pressure with that one cannon they're just gonna outgun him oh yeah that's this is looking very very bad for them uh, Lance and Shield is upgrading his second nuke things are about to get even more explosive than they already are Bob hardly even able to maintain Repair costs. Every time the cannon fires, it does something. And it does something critical. It's just... It's yep. just, just there's so much for him to chunk through. It's two players who have gone all weapons. This is, uh gonna be difficult for Bob. It's not impossible, it's just difficult, and he only has seven yeah. minutes to do it. We've, we have yet to see a uh, 2v1 comeback in the final day, so I'm starting to believe in the final game, Incursus. <laughs> I believe! Wait, no. It's opposite day. Every time the casters say something, the opposite happens, so we just jinxed Barbaretto into defeat. We can see Bob is expanding down to the lower area where Mateo's base once resided. Yeah, he took all the economy. So he just has to put down those weapons and, and basically survive with the, the shield of uh, anti-air. They're trying to block the reconnection. He's going out the back, he has plenty of outer resources. Uh oh. Uh, Cannons in a bad way. Cannon. And it's gone. Bob has officially lost all of his weapons. Nukes galore. <laughs> Interest, interesting. Uh... <laughs> that was both a good and a bad place for that to hit. 
Uh, that nuke disconnected the entirety of Bob's, well, everything. But it didn't blow him up, so that's nice. Bob has officially yeah, been disconnected from the map again. This is capture point. <laughs> oh, good lord. There's a reason we don't play that in competitive settings. Oh, the new... He's not going to be able to reconnect after this. They're not going to let him. He's going to yeah, have to live off of it. Yeah, the whole thing's going to burn down. Yeah, that's going to be... This is... This is this place Bob Barreto does not want to be. This is how Game 7 smells. And we're off. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a long match. We are up to match point for both teams here. Blue team on the left getting swept after their early early lead in this series. Barbaretto and Matteo are looking to close out this series finally in this last match here against their opponents Lance and Shield and Felix coming in with the clutch plays when they needed them. Red team is uh gearing up to take this victory. It's anyone's game at this point who can keep their calm and thoughts together. It's gonna take this uh series, this this event, this whole tournament and I am so so happy that it's so close it's, oh, yes. it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be for the ages whoever takes this has some serious bragging rights that they endure this kind of competition the whole night or whole evening and they still manage to perform in the last possible game I would never imagine that we go for 17 games today, but honestly, I couldn't be happier. Oh yeah, I'm I'm happy with this. That's it's a lot of forts. It's a lot of it is a lot of high skill plays, and uh, these players are exhausted. At this point, it's a marathon for them. So I'm curious to see if the uh, clutch plays are less clutch just because they spent so much energy. Awesome. But that is that is part of the game. Here we see the strategies have been revealed for these players a little bit earlier than usual. Uh, we have Swarm Missile Rush out of Barbaretto, Blue's top player. And Blue's lower player is going for the Plasma Beam, or should I say the Energy Weapons. He's uh, That's not, not surprising to me. I, I think this is exactly what I expected out of Blue Team in this in this final match. Whereas red team is going double lasers, they're 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 all lasers, which has consistently put them on the back foot every time they do this. But now they are architect. That is true, and that will enable them to do a a, a bit stronger defense, a bit better wood spam, uh, a little bit faster rush compared to non architect. But it's still strategically a more. Uh, it's still strategically a less powerful option compared to their okay. opponents they could also be hurricane honestly but i don't think that's that would pair well with uh, heavy laser weapons uh, we already have a uh, commander ability active out of out of blue team are they armadillo again uh, i'm gonna check they are spook for probably very well timed Basta by Lanson, avoiding the shot from the missile silos. Hmm. So actually, actually, Matthew and Bobretto have one of the strongest commanders spook for the last game. Oh my lord, they saved the best for last. That's... He loved it. I don't know but why anyone lets, lets the other team use Spook. That's just asking to lose the game. It's gonna be interesting. Oh, those those weapons are gonna be 
gonna come out fast on both sides. It seems like Lanson is a bit behind, honestly, with with building. Yeah, he spent a lot on his economy or on his defenses, and it's prevented him from getting his weapons down. So he hasn't started his weapons yet. Yeah, it looks like Architect for Red Team has given them the bonus build speed, which will let them fire their weapons first, despite being on the back foot. Uh, that's yeah. gonna... That's gonna let them... If they nail the second shot, which they seem to have, but yeah, that's gonna take out the fire beam from Mateo. Uh, the plaza beam should survive, so that's not game-ending damage. But that's really... Rough. Rough for Mateo to have to deal with. He does get the defense. The space oh. armor. Ooh, it penetrated for a moment there. It looks like he'll he'll keep it intact anyways. The space armor is enough to keep his plasma beam alive, so blue team Nukes isn't ready. out of the game. Nukes ready for Bobrato. That's gonna be an interesting shot because there is no anti-air currently on uh, on the red side that very well could be an instant kill if r really lucky. It could be. I think both players in the red team can survive a double nuke hit. Uh, but they're not aiming to destroy the cores. They're aiming to take... Oh! <laughs> oh! The beautiful shot disconnecting the nuke after it had already uh, taken the firing cost. Does he have another buzzsaw light? He does not. This one is going to fly. And they don't have anti-air available. At least not any significant amount. Yeah, that's that does nothing. Light shield. Yeah, one nuke is just not enough to go through anything at this point on the red side. Seems like Team Red have map control, uh, but uh, Matteo has his sniper up again. Yeah, the plasma beam just enough to kill the nuke. Whoa. Oh, the mines are gone from Roberto. He's only got one mine left. It's not the place you want to be in. He needs an energy shield up there. Is Bob... No. Don't give up so soon. He needs to get some, one more energy <laughs> shield going. Chat messages or what? Yeah. He said GG in chat. Like he's given up. You're not there yet. <laughs> they don't have anti... Oh, they got a little bit of anti here now. And it's enough. Yeah, this is not the time to give up. I mean, you press, you pressure to one nuke and you can do some chip damage and you win the game. So, and also Felix is burning himself, so. <laughs> Bob is like, hey, they only have, they only have energy weapons. Why don't I just get energy shields and invalidate everything they have? It's working. Oh. A few sandbags for Felix, a few anti-air weapons from Team uh, Team Red. They are they having the upper hand, but it's still 50-50. Uh, 1% of core damage can decide. Oh, the door snipe on the sniper. The Ooh. snipe. That was close. If that had fallen, that would have dealt core damage. And there it, it is. Don't. There it is. Blue team gets core damage on red, giving them the advantage should this go to time. But ba what is the size of the explosion rate of the plasma beam? It was like three levels on, on yeah, top it's, of the core. It's huge. Core damage again on Lance, and he's on fire. This is the scenario that I was afraid of for Red Team. Red was unable to finish off Barbaretto for the for the blue team. Just because he had energy shields. He built energy shields, so there's really nothing Red can do without tech switching. It's the same problem they had in many of their previous matches. They both went lasers, which can give them the early game advantage in terms of getting a, a timing attack versus blue team's heavy weapons rush. But then they have nothing to finish out the game. They need other weapons to finish out the game. 
And I this is the point. <laughs> I see an angle for Lance into Bob Rato's bottom. Yeah, it's, it's there. <laughs> There's a battery there. There is a chance. He can aim oh. up below and get some damage done. It, it's possible. It's just not... It's not a consistent shot. And Bob can easily, easily stop that just by building really much of anything there. Oh, Lance and Shield is about to expire. His luck license is about to expire. <laughs> uh. But there is that shot. But now Bob Rato is building the energy shield there. He's not taking it lightly now. Oh, the plasma beam touched the core but didn't kill it, bringing it down to 44%. Yeah, it looks like Bob has finally come to the conclusion he needs to just fully energy shield absolutely everything. Another nuke lands. Felix taking hit after hit oh he's is he gonna try to recover that weapon it's it's at a really bad spot uh, he's gonna I try to i think he I think he has to at this point he might have to you're right there's there's no way that he's uh gonna be able to come back from this if he doesn't get the ability to fire that weapon again There is no more angle for them. Here comes another set of double nukes. No I more core my, damage, but... I am on the edge of my seat, but I don't think there is a way in back to this. Like, <laughs> we said that multiple times, but there is nothing. Like, there is no Ooh. way back to the, into this. <laughs> it's the only... Thing he could possibly do. Uh, fire beam. I mean, they could always hit a nuke and cause they go drunk and make it do something crazy. Uh, I say always, but that's just not something that happens at any meaningful frequency. Uh, it's possible for them to fire beam, door snipe the plasma beam of Mateo and make that go away, which could potentially cause a collapse, which could cause it wouldn't be lethal. But it would slow them down a lot and give them an opportunity to not immediately, not immediately die. Um, but at this point, there's only a single fire beam, and I don't think that can that can uh, eventually door snipe that plasma. You are correct. Even if it's the perfectly timed and hit perfectly, it will not destroy the plasma beam. Is needs a second fire beam for that. Uh, there's things you can do to damage. Now, that was a good shot. Pre-fired machine guns. Maybe it makes it through. No significant damage dealt. And that's the fire beam falling down, igniting poor Lanson. And there is no weapons remaining. Only that single swarm missile. Well, uh, blue team has no anti-air. So that's nice. Uh, if only they were able to launch that while they still had fire beams or any kind of energy weapons, they could have capitalized on Bob's energy shields being shut down by the swarm missiles. Indeed. But this seems to be uh, a an issue for Felix and Lance and Shield here. They consistently do not have the weapons they need to shut down energy shields, and it's. They've been able to get ahead early. But blue team just comes back because red team cannot finish. They don't have a win condition. They just have a stay in the game condition. Yeah, this is how the consistency of strategies comes out and and allows uh, Bob and uh, Matteo to take this. The nuke update is on the way for uh, for Lanson, but at this point they need a kill. Yes, yes they do. They need a direct kill, and I can't see that any other way than the nuke plus uh, Matteo self killing with the plasma beam into energy shield. Matteo's base is kind of leaning forward. It's 
potential. I don't even think that would collapse. Uh, he's got it cross. He's got additional bracing in there. Even if the nuke hits and breaks everything off the front of Mateo's base, I still think it would stand. 50 seconds remaining. Lance and Shield is going to get a one shot with the nuke. But they don't have map control. Team 2 has one all shot, the anti air. One opportunity. And that's it. They actually it. had the fire beam ready, but yeah, it's too much. Just too much. Yeah, that's the point where when you are just trying to stay alive, find some, find some, uh, some uh, statistics and congratulate the winners. Ten seconds remaining from the FPL first season finals best of seven last game and we have a winner guys we have a winner none other than Pobreto and Matteo the most consistent duo from all the tournament I loved every moment of this this is this is amazing congratulations to Barbaretto and Matteo taking first place in the Forts Pro League